The Big Clip Studio Paint 2.0 update has just arrived, and in this video I'll show you 9 new or updated features that you simply have to know about. Back when Clip Studio Paint 2.0 was announced, I didn't hesitate for a second to ask, beg and pester the Clip Studio Paint team to let me into an early version as fast as humanly and unhumanly possible. As some of you might have noticed by now, I'm quite the Clip Studio Paint devotee, and I can't help but get excited about new software features. So I'm thrilled to announce that this video is in fact sponsored by Clip Studio Paint themselves, and without this opportunity to work with them, I would not have had this chance to gain early access to the update so I could share this video with you guys today. So what do you say we just get down to the nitty gritty because that's what you're all here for. Just as Clip Studio Paint have had posable 3D models in the past, now you can drag a 3D head onto your canvas and customize it to look like your characters. Use the face mixer panel to select a base for your hidden model. You can use these sliders to add or reduce features of the selected face, which makes it possible to create countless combinations and features. If you don't like over-exaggerated faces, you can also use the limiter here. You can further customize the features with the Facial Features panel. Here you can adjust the head shape, eyebrows, eyes, nose, mouth, ears and neck. You can even create asymmetrical features by only applying feature changes to the right side or the left side of the face. The 3D head allows you to study your character's proportions from different angles, and you can use the 3D head as the base for your character drawings so that you make sure that your character has the same features each time you draw them. And with like the 3D body models, you can save your head designs as presets so that you can reapply them at any point later on. Whereas the previous version of Clip Studio Paint only allowed you to use and manipulate one layer at a time with the Liquify tool, in version 2 you can now use the Liquify tool across multiple layers. Simply select multiple layers or a folder containing all the layers you want to manipulate and use the Liquify tool on all of them simultaneously. Next up is the new Shading Assist feature. This feature can help you pick colors and or apply initial shading to your objects or characters. In this example I'm using a character colored with just base colors. You can use the shading assist either on one layer at a time, or you can group layers, select the folder and use the feature on multiple layers at the same time. Select your layer or layers and go to edit and choose shading assist. The first time you open the shading assist feature, it will open with the shadow type cell shading. For this short walkthrough, I'll mainly show the smooth shading feature, which you can change to by changing the shadow type to smooth shading in this drop down menu. You can change between directional light or ball light and move the light source location by dragging the manipulator across your canvas. You can increase or decrease the strength of the lights and shadows by adjusting these little ball points here. Change between cell shading and soft shading. You can also manually adjust the settings for the highlights and the shadows. For instance, you can choose to add shading using the existing colors of your selected layers, or you can add your own colors by selecting Use Base Colors. Depending on which one you use, a new set of adjustable properties will appear so that you can further customize your shading. You can also select from a list of presets or save your own preset for later use. When you're satisfied with your settings, hit OK, and the shading now gets applied as layers that you can continue to work with. In version 2.0, the color mixing tool has received an update to make it more realistic to paint and mix colors. Take this example where I use an opaque watercolor brush to paint with blue on top of yellow. The old color mixer would gradually add blue and blend it with the yellow. 
but in real life mixing yellow and blue would give you green. In version 2.0, pick your preferred paintbrush, go to the subtool detail window by clicking on the little wrench here. Now go to the ink tab and scroll down and change mixing mode to perceptual. Now the color mixer blends a more realistic color, taking into account how the colors you're mixing would behave in real life. Clip Studio Paint previously introduced 3D panorama backgrounds, and in version 2.0 you can now easily turn any picture or drawing into a panorama filter. For this example I'm going to drag in this beach image from Clip Studio Paint's own asset library, but you can also draw your own environment instead. Make sure that your drawing or picture is rasterized, then go to Filter, Distort, and Convert to Panorama. Hit OK and then save your image somewhere in your computer. Now insert a 3D panorama onto your canvas and select File in the Tool Property window. Select the panorama image that you just saved and voila! That's how fast you can now create and use your own panorama environments. The new version 2.0 now finally also has Align and Distribute properties. You can use these properties to align your layer objects on your canvas or distribute them evenly. Here I'm drawing three shapes on different layers. When you pick the Operation tool from the Tool menu, you can see a little blue box appearing. That is the boundary box for your current layer's objects. Select the layers you want to align or distribute and open your Align, Distribute, Properties panel. From here you can align and distribute the objects either according to each other, the entire canvas, or you can define your own selected area to use as a reference. You can also choose to use vector paths or guidelines. The text tool has also been updated. You can now select multiple text boxes and apply changes to all of them at the same time. Additionally, you can now also wrap text in your text boxes so that you can adjust the size of your text box when you manipulate it instead of transforming the text. You can add the text wrap checkbox to your properties panel by going to the subtool details then click the text tab and enable the visibility of the property. Now it will appear in your tool properties window. Version 2.0 now also allows you to change the gender appearance of your 3D models after you have inserted them onto the canvas. In the subtool properties panel, you can now find the male or female appearances and change it at any time. If you have already applied a specific body type or made changes to your body manually or given your model a pose, it stays the same even when you change the gender appearance of the model. And lastly, and perhaps one of the coolest new features coming with the 2.0 update is the hand scanner. Add a 3D model onto your canvas, select the model and locate the properties bar at the bottom. Click the Pulse Scanner icon and select the Hand Scanner with Camera. A new window now pops up and here you can select which of the hands you want to manipulate. Now select your camera source in this drop down menu and let Clip Studio Paint do the magic. Using video tracking from your camera source you can now live pose your model's hands. Click OK when you are happy and your model's hands are now adjusted after your camera input. Pretty effing cool if you ask me. There are more new and updated features in Clip Studio Paint version 2.0 than just the ones that I've covered in this video, such as autosave, fish lens, optimized camera control for gestures, and more. I will personally be upgrading permanently to version 2.0 because I really like the new features a lot and I wish to keep receiving new features and updates as the team develops them. Be sure to check out Clip Studio Paint version 2.0 by following the link in the description below. And if you're already a Clip Studio Paint user, I think you'll like this video on the screen right now, where you can learn how to master the versatile fill tool of Clip Studio Paint. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like. It supports my channel like a lot. <laughs> Until next time, guys. Take care.